really the goal was, could a foundation model be engineered with the sole purpose of breaking language barriers. You, you can translate words sometimes to some degree, but you can't translate meaning. In a quantum era of AI, how do we access global information? If you can remove language barriers, what does that look like? This is Anthony Galliano for B2B Cambodia with a special segment today, which we're very fortunate because we're going to talk about AI. Anytime somebody comes into town that's an expert or a professional in an area, we grab them and try to get them to sit down with us to talk about that particular subject. Today, that person we grabbed was uh, Brian Armstrong, who is the co-founder and the CEO of Voisin, which is an AI company, startup, very entrepreneurial, uh, exciting, exciting products. So we're really happy to talk to Brian today. Brian, first, thanks for stopping by the yeah. studio with your very busy schedule. Thank and you. I'm going to let you just tell us a little bit about yourself, sure. uh, a little bit about your career and how you ended up uh, with uh, Voicen and uh, as an AI entrepreneur. I think what would best describe me as an entrepreneur is that I've been uh, a crazy serial entrepreneur. You know, my first startup probably was when I was 13. I did a, a magazine for street kids and got advertising and it was on TV at the time, which was like going viral today and uh, did exceptionally well, raised a lot of money, thought I was a 10 cent millionaire and uh, it imploded within a year. You know, that's when I started smoking cigars and I was the man, I arrived. That was my first I arrived moment. And then humbled by uh, lack of experience and know-how. And I had three stories like that, that I was always hugely ambitious. Like as a kid, I would stand, watch infomercials on real estate and like try to write things down. And, and I don't know, that was just, uh, I guess it was in my DNA early. But uh, we got, Andal, the co-founder and I first worked together back in the dot-com era. And we did exceptional work that was highly innovative. And we did really well. We were way ahead of our time. And, and I think the last half of my career has been more on a global scale and a global focus. But I've always underneath been a tech entrepreneur. So I think that's what got me to where I am today. And I think I've, uh, I've just had a thirst for change. Uh, let's talk about your company. Mm. Uh, so it's uh, Vosin. Yeah. And it stands for something. So I'll let you tell us <laughs> what it stands for. And also... Um, your products and services and how they would actually apply to Cambodia at the stage we're in. Look, I, I think it's important. When we started, um, really the goal was, could a foundation model be engineered with the sole purpose of breaking language barriers? Everybody knows, whether it's from subtitling, if you have any kind of multilingual exposure, at best it's a poor experience. You, you can translate words sometimes to some degree, but you can't translate meaning. There's so many more factors to create understanding and experience. So we, we set out to do that. Our main focus, and we identified over 576 sort of contributing factors to drive universal understanding emotions, gestures, nuances. So once we got past our technical feasibility and started modeling, and it really was like profoundly different, <laughs> you know, um, which is not the same. It's not a me too. It is different than the other foundation models that exist, the Gemini's or open AI's. This, is, this was always our, our singular uh, focus point. So we set out to come to design and engineer a platform that is what comes after the browser. What's next in a, in a quantum era of AI? How do we access global information? If you can remove language barriers, what does that look like? 60% of the global population is in Southeast Asia. Simplified Chinese is a huge population that covers Cantonese and Mandarin and all the dialects that fall into it, but yet 2.7% of the global internet is even accessible by China, but in, 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 that's even indexable, not even accessible. So when you think about social media, you think about online shopping, you think about all the trends, the massive transformation that's happening, our ability to understand and access global information as much as we could see value to places like Cambodia, uh, they, their, their ability to access global information totally transforms probably at a 10,000 X relationship of value. So that's, that's fundamentally what our platform is designed to do is to create that experience engine 
and that experience layer that allows for global connectivity. How do you see it uh, applicable in Cambodia, given our current state of uh, AI uh, advancement? Well, I think language preservation, like there, there are priorities that I think are exceptionally important to Cambodia. And I think they're good priorities. I actually think, you know, wh whether you're looking at the smart city, there's a, a lot of development and change, but there's also a desire, it's a respect-based culture to preserve the integrity of the language through growth. They're not looking to sell their souls in the process, but also whether it's education, healthcare, global innovation, even the standards, a lot has changed in banking and various sectors. And I think eliminating those barriers help preserve the language, but also help empower knowledge and access and strengthen. I, I mean, I believe breaking language barriers transcends all industries. If you get outside of the metropolitan areas, it doesn't take long before you, you, know, you look at agriculture, having standards and knowledge and being able to assess. There's, there's countless ways. It's more about executing that matters. It's about forging the right relationships, keeping proper practices in mind, having social impact, doing it responsibly, but tremendous value can, I see huge potential for Cambodia.